environmental modulators were the last part of this, and I did want to spend a moment on these. There are a variety of them. This is the David Allison uh, and McAllister's list of sleep debt, maternal age, intrauterine environment, uh, uh, maternal smoking, infective agents associated with sorting and matings, medications, temperature regulation, exercise, and food uh, abundance. And I've talked about some of those already. Breastfeeding uh, is clearly important. This is a dose response one. The longer these infants were breastfed up to 12 months, the lower their percentage of obesity was when they entered school at age six. Um, maternal smoking is important and it manifests itself out into the early uh, adult life. If a mother smoked during pregnancy, uh, that child is at greater risk for obesity than if they did not. Even if they stopped after the first trimester, which is the blue bar in the middle, they still had some, most of this impact present. Uh, sleep time in infancy is, is also an important predictor of your weight when you enter school. Uh, kids should get more sleep. You should not have televisions in children's rooms because it, uh, or computers actually, because it keeps them up later and if they don't get enough sleep, they're at higher risk. I wanted to present a few of the slides on endocrine disruptors. Our food industry and others add a lot of pesticide industry, uh, fertilizer industry, add lots of chemicals to our environment. Uh, and as the information accumulates, a number of these influence body weight uh, and or reproductive system. Uh, organochlorines, the polychlorinated phenols are, are, are one of these, uh, in fact, as are the organobromines, but they're also uh, bisphenol A, uh, which has a number of receptors of, of particularly the estrogen one, uh, organotins, organophosphates, phthalates, and heavy metals. So our, and I suspect we will find that these are playing a larger, larger role in modulating our early environmental exposures. What mothers are eating is crossing the placenta and many of those compounds, because these are very lipid soluble compounds, entering brain. And the brain in utero is a very responsive organ and it can be programmed, uh, and I suspect these are playing more of a role than we uh, suspect. Let me jump past medications. Uh, the built environment plays a role in how fat kids are. This is the odds ratio of being overweight and the number of recreational facilities in your neighborhood. If the more you have, the, the uh, greater your odds of not being overweight. So, uh, the environment in which people are growing up, whatever their genetic makeup may be, is playing a role. Uh, food prices, I'm going to pass because I want to give you what one dollar will buy, but I don't want to do that. Obesity is clearly contagious in the sense that if you are fat and you have relatives or friends, you will influence their risk. This is the Framingham study data of Christakis um, that if uh, you, your chance of obesity is increased by 57% if a friend becomes obese, 40% if an adult sibling becomes obese, and 37% if a spouse becomes obese. So there's a lot of interplay between the obesity in one person and the obesity in their relatives. Um, and this is the map they have of that uh, interactions and uh, nodal spread of obesity. But the one I hadn't seen until recently is, is the last one I want to mention, and that's the relationship between income disparity uh, and obesity. This is a plot of, of rising income disparity. It's the difference between the bottom and top 20% of the population's earning capacity. So the greater that discrepancy, the farther out on the right side of this abscissa you are. Um, and this is the percent obese in the populations in question. Uh, note that uh, most of the English-speaking countries are on the far right side of this. It's interesting that the income disparity in the English-speaking countries, in contrast to most others, is much higher. Not clear why that is, uh, but USA, UK, Australia, and New Zealand are all out here. The only other one is Portugal on this side. At the other end are most of the Scandinavian countries and, and Japan. But this isn't just a, an issue uh, 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 across countries. It's an issue within states in the United States. And I wanted you to look at where Louisiana is. That's where we're standing today. Only New York, with its uh, gazillion gazillionaires, uh, is higher than we are. That's not a good sign. And note that 
our neighbors, Mississippi and Alabama and Tennessee, uh, are also high on this discrepancy list. So this is exactly the same inequality spread. It's the top versus bottom 20% versus the percent who are obese in each of these, these states. So there's clearly an, a, a, a socioeconomic environment leading to obesity independent of whatever these calories are. We don't have the same different supermarkets around the country, uh, but we do have differences in what people have to spend in various levels of their of, of society. So I think I'm at the end, Merlin. I apologize for, uh, we did get almost my 45 minutes in, but I didn't uh, plan to do that. Yesterday I'd cut it way down. You wouldn't have seen any of this stuff yesterday. You got it today, so I apologize for that. Obesity is an ancient problem. I hope I've made that point very clear. A model for regulation of energy stores includes environmental and individual factors. And although we say it's an individual's responsibility, I hope I've shown you that there are clearly powerful environmental factors that, that uh, influence how those genes uh, and individual responses work. Genetic factors are involved. Energy, food intake is a major driver, I think, three quarters or more of it's that reduced energy expenditure plays a subsidiary role. The century regulatory system is important and I think this pleasure reward system, the ventral tegmental area and the dopamine system is, 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 is uh, uh, very important indeed. Finally, environment modulates many of these factors uh, as I hope you've seen. So if I can get this one slide which doesn't want to come up in the middle, there's one in the middle of there. Come on up to you last slide. Nope. I don't like that slide. Ah, there it is. The human body is composed of head and limbs and torso, kept slim by gents at great expense by ladies even more so. Thank you, Ogden Nash. So that's uh, my presentation for you this morning.